welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing off 24W11A, the latest snapshot for 121, which introduces armor trims and the absolutely overpowered mace weapon, which can absolutely one-shot a warden under the right circumstances. So without further ado, let's investigate what this snapshot brings to the game. Over here on the change hogs, you can see that well, judging by the sidebar, this is going to be quite a bit. So I'm going to scroll through pretty quickly. All I'm going to say is more rooms for trial chambers. Vault loot now includes some new stuff. Mace, breeze rod, heavy core, armor trims, pottery shards. Well, actually shards, that's just spelling wise. And two new banner patterns. So you can see a lot of stuff is going to be added. So a lot of technical things because of course items got rewritten so data packs are going to have to do some things and it's pretty much a major version change for modding so i wouldn't expect any mods to really port themselves to 1.20.5 because of that so now it's time to look in game what this does exactly to get an idea of how strong the mace is without going into boring statistics i'm going to teleport myself quite high up need to do, well, quite significant of a height to do this, I'm going to teleport myself 150 blocks up. You can see, I'm in survival, have a totem, just so it's easy to record, and what do you know, the warden's dead. That's right, the mace scales its damage based off of how far you're falling. And even better, if you manage to land the hit, it will save you from your own fall damage. Notice, my totem's still in hand, I'm not invincible, Netherite armor doesn't even protect from fall damage. So you can see how strong the mace is. In order to craft it, you need to get a breeze rod and a heavy core. Both of those will be from the trial chambers below. It also doesn't have that much durability, only 250. So you can imagine that this is a pretty rare weapon you'd want to use. It's not going to be as strong as something like a sword or an axe, but even then, swords are better because they can get looting. So, if you manage to get the height advantage over an opponent, then you can absolutely demolish them. Combine this with the wind charge, now you have some very stylish ways of dealing damage. So, imagine this in a PvP fight, use a wind charge or two, maybe come in with an elytra, and absolutely demolish your opponent. For the trial chambers themselves, they've gotten a couple new variants. Notice, this little structure here never existed before. Although it's a bunch of small changes, there are a couple of new rooms, not to mention vaults will spawn on tough in order to make them more differentiable. And you won't confuse them with the breeze because that will have a nice carving on it and copper around it. So now, it's very easy to pick out where the vaults are in the room. So, take a look around. Even if not all of these structures are new, Still, there are a couple of new ones, such as this little labyrinth type structure, with a bunch of slimes and a breeze for good measure. So, you can imagine, this is going to make a more interesting experience in the end. Although the direct loot tables aren't changed too much, to my knowledge, if at all, still, it'll be pretty interesting to navigate. But, a couple new things. One, that's not a normal pottery shard. That is a new one. And this one derives itself from the breeze itself. So, battering this using something. Notice that it's quite hostile in here with all the slimes, so you have to make sure that you get a more valid weapon. Maces don't work yet on that. Guster Pottery Shard. And there's a couple of new ones around. This one is pretty interesting. A flow pottery shard. And yeah, you're going to have to contend with all the dangerous monsters in here. But, new pottery shards and new loot from the vault, which I will be showing in just a second. For the loot itself, we have the two new armor trims, and here's just a quick glance of their loot table. Seems like you aren't going to get as much diamond stuff anymore, but hey, you're getting a couple of new interesting items and some honey, so that way you can keep exploring for longer. So, with all that, this is the flow, I was wearing it in the intro. I think it looks better than Silence Trim, probably going to be my favorite. And then on the right, we have the Bolt Trim, and this one is a bit more industrial versus the wind style of that one. And then we have our three Pottery Shards, this being the Gust one, 
which is actually called Guster. Then we have Flow, and then that one's Scrape. And in between them, we have the Heavy Cores. The Heavy Core only has one usage to my knowledge, and that is for the Mace. And because it's only gotten through Vaults, this means that the Mace is a non-renewable item. Since Infinite Players is not possible, you are eventually going to run out of Maces if you keep losing them or breaking them. So, you have to be very careful about that. Make sure you don't use your mace too much or you put mending on it. So, a bunch of interesting items to see here. For a little bit more of a nuance change, we have the two new banner patterns that come with this place. The flow and guster patterns. And they translate quite well to shields. They come to from volts, and they would come looking like this on a shield. So, I can imagine that some people might like this. And then, for the final new change, we have ourselves the new Breeze Rod. So, going in creative so I can use this twice. If you kill a Breeze, you can get one to two Breeze Rods. And if you kill it with looting, you can get a lot more. So, where are the wind charges? Well, they're coming from this now. So, your wind charges have a little bit more varied of a usage. Not to mention, the new mace attack will allow you to deal incredible damage by using the wind charge to boost yourself up. So, getting myself something strong, like an iron golem, I'm not really going to be able to take a hit afterwards, but if I get myself the mace, summon the iron golem, and then, like this, well, you can see, it dealt some damage. I, of course, died in the process, but still, it's a good way to deal damage. To give a little bit better of an example of how that might work without absolutely getting shredded by the Iron Golem, I'm going to be doing this in creative. So, you want a little bit of a height advantage, so that way you get even more damage out of it. Jump, wind charge, and what do you know, 25 damage or more from that. So you can imagine sneaking up on a random player and doing that to have an absolutely amazing first strike against them. Since even with iron armor, that's still going to deal a ton of damage, and even with netherite, that's still part of a warden hit. So, you should expect a couple hearts of damage being dealt from a good first hit. And it doesn't have to be only your first hit, you could do this repeatedly with good momentum. So, you can see how quickly this iron golem is going down if I can do this right. So, is it a very highly skilled method? Yeah, so you're gonna have to practice it a lot. But, it's going to still be very effective to use, at the cost of the rarity of using the mace. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And stay tuned for next week, or maybe the week after depending on what Mojang does, because I'm likely to upload another snapshot video, so that way you stay updated with the latest stuff. So, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out. Thank you.